good Josh, your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we gotta check this one out, man. This is a special one. I think a lot of you guys are excited about this. This was an era of wrestling that I think a lot of us did not enjoy. Rest in peace to the WWE pandemic era 2020 2021. One of, if not the worst era of wrestling. I'm gonna just be honest with you. It's a part of wrestling that it, it just, it was awful. In the sense of no crowds, per same storylines. Like it just didn't feel right. WrestleMania last year with no crowd was the weirdest WrestleMania of all time. And these shows, these with the virtual crowds, it's just, it's not enough. You gotta have fans. Fans are what make wrestling great. Without fans, wrestling is not the same. It's not. It's just, let's just keep it a stack, man. So it's good to know that this era is over with. And I'm glad that the crowds and the fans are coming back. So we're gonna check this out. Appreciate all the love and support. Let's get into this. 16 months since the pandemic completely changed the entire world Facts. as we know it. Schools were closing down, forcing students to learn from home. Employees were stuck working at home also because the offices were closed. Mm -hmm. The NBA, along with other sports, even suspended their season. However, one thing continued, and that was professional wrestling. The WWE could not afford to take some time off because of their TV deals, and so the show went on. Vince McMahon took all of his employees and talents to Florida and they transformed the Performance Center into the new set for Monday Night Raw and Friday Night Smackdown. I will never forget watching the first episode of SmackDown, wondering how WWE could go on for the rest of the pandemic without a crowd. It was beyond weird to watch yeah, wrestling in a completely empty arena, could, but they somehow managed it. I'd even say that a lot of good matches, moments, and things came out of the pandemic era. It's pretty underrated if you ask me. With that being said, I wanted to spend some time today looking at some of those highlights from the pandemic era that really carry WWE for the last 16 months. We should appreciate this special time in wrestling, although it was strange, bizarre, and sometimes annoying. Wrestling know. was there for us for that. I will give them that, that they, you know, tried to do the best they could, but I'm gonna be honest with you, it was, to me, Easily one of the worst eras of wrestling grateful. in all time, you know, just in my opinion. The biggest highlight of the first half of the pandemic era has to be Drew McIntyre and his entire this WWE was, this championship was nice. reign. This was nice. The WWE needed someone to fill in the shoes of a top star, and mm -hmm. Drew McIntyre was not afraid of that he challenge. Did. He accepted it and excelled beyond anyone's expectations. Facts. Drew McIntyre really solidified himself as a true superstar during the pandemic era. He carried Monday Night Raw on his back with his incredible feuds against Seth Rollins, mm -hmm. Randy Orton, and Bobby Lashley. He was definitely carrying Monday Night Raw. I'm not even going to lie to you. He was definitely carrying Monday Night Raw. Like, I'm going to just keep it a stack and a half, man. So, hey, shout out to Drew. Um, when he was on top of the card, he was putting the company on his back. And at this point, Roman Reigns was still gone. So, hey, I'm not going to lie to you. Drew did his thing during the COVID era of, uh, of WWE. Ashley, he deserves so much more credit. And I hate how there's a portion of Twitter fans right now currently hating on him because it doesn't make sense that he's on the top of the division. Yes, he's a top star. He deserves top star positions. Anyways, Drew rules. While Drew McIntyre was carrying Monday Night Raw, Sasha Banks and Bayley were doing the same thing for SmackDown. The golden role models were consistently entertaining on a weekly basis. Bayley's women's championship run was superb, and she's quietly become my new favorite member of the four horsewomen throughout the yeah, pandemic she's era. Definitely, I thought that these two she's, she's definitely gotten into her own, like in her own stride were excellent when it came to storytelling and providing entertainments. WWE giving them all the belts was also a fantastic idea. Even though it did not last for too long, it was a fun moment. 
Bailey and Sasha Banks holding all of the gold was an underrated moment during this period of time. It was also great to see Sasha Banks become the SmackDown Women's Champion and have a lengthy run mm -hmm. before putting on that classic match with Bianca Belair. Cinematic matches. A key highlight from... I will say this. If there were some highlights, this was one of them. Boneyard match was pretty, pretty dope. The match with John Cena and The Fiend, that was pretty cool. The match between Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa, that was cool. Uh, I think there was a match, uh, I could be wrong, I think Adam Cole versus Velveteen Dream in like a parking lot, like I, that was cool. Like those cinematic matches were actually quite entertaining, man. From the pandemic era was the introduction of cinematic matches. Although other performers in different promotions already had cinematic matches, this was the first time that WWE finally had their own because there weren't fans in the stands anyway, so it didn't matter if someone was watching it live or not. There were three very good ones that I want to talk about. The first one is the Boneyard match between The Undertaker and AJ Styles. This was absolutely perfect, and yeah. you could have not given Undertaker a better send-off. This was a Another great match. excellent cinematic Fantastic match, match was too. the Firefly Funhouse Just, match with The Fiend man, and John great. Cena, and I love this match so much so that it's actually in my top 10 favorite matches of all time. And last but not least, the Money in the Bank ladder match last year was also very fun and it was unique. I didn't, I didn't like Otis winning it, but the match it. itself was fun. Part of me wishes that cinematic matches will return, but I don't see that happening. I ain't watched Money in the Bank. The Hurt year. Business would have never happened if there was in a pandemic. The group may be dead right now, but it was amazing while it lasted. Don't know why they killed them off. I did that. You gotta start, you gotta start stuttering because it, it doesn't make sense. Vince, what are you doing? That doesn't. I don't know why. They were so good. They were so good. I don't know why they got rid of him. MVP took Bobby Lashley and he turned him into a superstar that is now the WWE champion. He also rejuvenated the careers of Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander. It does suck that WWE isn't doing too much with those two since the split, but I do have to appreciate the group even though it didn't last too long. It's one of my favorite factions ever, period. This stable also helped bring back the prestige of the US title, so you also gotta respect that as well. Don't know why the Hurt Business probably. was great. People need to give more credit to the Randy Orton and Edge feud because I thought it was actually perfect. Everything about it was good really too. good stuff. I enjoyed that. Randy Orton turning on Edge was great. Then giving an RKO to his wife just made things even that more personal. And that's such a Randy Orton thing. And then Edge would deliver some of the best promos of his career on mm -hmm. Raw. And unlike most people, I thought their last man standing match at WrestleMania 36 was pretty good. It was a physical bout with two men trying. I felt like it could have been better. I think it was a little bit too long, but I enjoyed it though. I definitely did enjoy it. Trying to kill each other and nothing more than that. It is exactly what it needed to be. If that wasn't enough, they also gave the fans the greatest wrestling match of all time. And that match, I believe, is going to age like fine wine. That was a pretty good match too. That wasn't the greatest the of all time, era but it was, was good, good for talent it when it comes good. to character work. Wrestlers needed to shift their focus from the in-ring competition to the storyline aspect of professional. Oh man, all I can think about was the eye for an eye match. Just uh, Ray, why they do you so dirty, Ray? We can't we can't forget about that. That was part of the pandemic era. The eye for an eye match, and the winner has to gouge out the loser's eye. Like, what? Okay. Wrestling, it was tough to really put on a good match without a live audience, and so WWE doubled down on character work. Seth Rollins would take full advantage of this, bringing his Monday Night Messiah character to life. I believe Seth Rollins was one of WWE's most valuable performers during the pandemic era. He managed to get people invested in his character and most of his feuds as well. The feud against the Mysterios might have gone on for a little too long, mm -hmm. but I have to admit it and say it was good stuff in the beginning of the pro. Program. His SummerSlam match against Dominic was also really good as well. Seth Rollins only continued to improve his game, becoming even better in 2021. This was a good time for Rollins to master his skills. 
One of the most underrated feuds that many people don't talk about enough is the Braun Strowman and Bray Wyatt program. I guess people didn't like it, but I thought it was brilliant, especially uh, when it came to storytelling. I was always interested in a feud between these two, and I was glad that it finally happened. It had some good moments in it, for sure. Like him going back to the the old Bray Wyatt gimmick, uh, Bray Wyatt gimmick, you know what I'm saying? It, it was cool. But I just wasn't the biggest fan of it. You know, I just, I, I ain't really too much care for it as much as I should have. Their money in the big match told a good story. Then they had the Swamp Fight, which was kind of entertaining because we did have Old Bray Wyatt who made a return. And then their SummerSlam match led to the return of Roman Reigns. You cannot complain too much when it comes to these two. Roman Reigns they practically that was kept dope. the Universal Championship great. interesting for the time being. WWE's ratings were not doing too well throughout the pandemic era, and this led to the debut of the Thunderdome. The essence of this was to create an atmosphere that brought back excitement to professional wrestling. And it was cool at first, I'll say that, but then afterwards I was just like, yeah, I'm ready for people to come back. I'm tired of seeing people on the screens. I want people back. So it, it, it did its job. It did its job to give some type of wrestling vibe to it it was you know better than being in the performance center but yeah you know it, nothing beats actual live crowds instead of piped in crowd chants and wwe took this risk on this insane idea and it massively paid off although i wasn't a huge fan of the idea at first it turned out to be a good one and changed everything for the wwe reporters have also gone out and stated that the thunderdome pretty much stayed the company's ratings so you have to respect wwe's yeah, creativity did. because this also gave us probably the better half of the pandemic era oh yeah you gotta put roman reigns roman reigns you gotta put him in there he is, without a doubt, one of the best things about the pandemic era of wrestling. Because without him, I don't know how well it would have lasted, man. Roman Reigns coming back saved not only WWE in a sense, because at least fans had something to really sink their teeth into, but saved damn near SmackDown, man. Oh, shit return during the pandemic era he took some time off to protect the health of his newborn twins but six months later he would return at SummerSlam beating up both Braun Strowman and The Fiend a week later and he paired himself with Paul Heyman in a shocking moment and then won the Universal Championship officially turning heel what followed after was the greatest work of his entire career Facts. and Roman Reigns has been carrying the professional Ooh. wrestling world Whoa. since becoming the best thing about the business Facts. He's turned Jay Uso into a main event star. He yep. made Paul Heyman relevant again, yep. and he made the Universal Championship the most prestigious title in the industry. Yep. I'll just say that Roman Reigns has become this generation's GOAT during this pandemic era. Yes, he definitely came into his own. I know this may seem very random, but the pandemic era also gave Sheamus a lot of opportunities, and I just want to say that he's been killing it as well. I loved his mini feud with Jeff Hardy. It was cool, and the two had great chemistry. Sheamus then went on to have an intense program with Drew McIntyre, which was also good, and he is currently the US champion. That was a perfect choice by the WWE and their creative team. Without the pandemic era, okay I think that he might have been US lost champion. in the shuffle. So thankfully, he's been able to prove his value for the company. Sami Zayn has been doing amazing work ever since returning to WWE when they introduced the Thunderdome. He's doing the best work of his career. He's hilarious, interesting, and one of the best he, parts of SmackDown. We need to well. appreciate the brilliance of Sami Zayn a lot more if we don't already. One of the final things that I want to appreciate during the pandemic era is WrestleMania 37. The card was truly special. Both nights from top to bottom were really good, and seeing the fans return for the yeah, one show was, was a was great cool. added bonus. That was really Drew cool. versus Bobby was dope. Cesaro finally got his WrestleMania mm -hmm. singles match and his WrestleMania moments. Bad Bunny killed it. Yep. Bianca Belair became a star. Logan Paul took one of the meanest stunners of all time, and Roman Reigns won in one of the best WrestleMania matches ever. Yep. It was a true, massive success. Yes. 
And that pretty much wraps up the WWE pandemic era. It was quite the interesting time to be a WWE fan. We experienced some ups and some downs. However, overall, when you look at it, I think it was a really exceptional year for wrestling. With that being said, though, I cannot wait for WWE fans to return. I think that WWE is positioning themselves for their best year in a decade. I am beyond excited. Thank you. I like his optimism, but I'm let's be honest. Monday Night Raw has been awful in this pandemic. The early, like last year, it was it was tolerable because you had some stuff on Raw that you cared about. Drew McIntyre, his whole situation, him carrying pretty much the company. Then when Roman Reigns came back, he started pretty much carrying the company. So you had some good things. But this year, bro, be honest with you, I, Raw is awful. It is garbage. It is bottom of the barrel no smackdown has some enjoyable stuff smackdown is way better than raw at this point and nxt is still holding it down you know it's not as good as it used to be but nxt still has some things about it that is still enjoyable and they at least allow fans in their you know in their you know venues and stuff but nah nah let's let's not overlook the fact that raw has been complete doo-doo water but Comment down below, let me know, are you guys glad that the pandemic era is over? I'm pretty sure 100% of you guys are going to say, yes, we're glad pandemic era is over. Fans will be in attendance. Yes. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that, man. But uh, yeah, I would like to get your guys' thoughts and opinions. And, and let me know, comment down below as well, your favorite moment from the pandemic era what was your favorite match favorite moment let me know i want to get your guys opinions on that but i appreciate all the love and support road to 50k appreciate y'all kicking with me and i'll see y'all on the next one peace